What scares us? What is fear? We're going to be talking about fear and how to overcome that this week on episode number 165 of The Relaxed Mail. This is The Relaxed Mail, a show that comes to you each week helping men to remove the nice guy from their life so they can actually live their life on their terms. Join the host, certified coach, Brian Goodwin, as he helps men step out of their heads and become free from the thoughts that bind them. Hey man, hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right, this is episode number 165 of the Relaxed Mail and I am your host, Brian. I am a men's life coach and I help men who are going through a divorce, whether it's in the beginnings, early stages, and your wife's just told you, Hey, I'm, I'm done with this. I want out of this divorce, out of this marriage, or you are getting into it and things are starting to get arranged and pieces are starting to get set. Or even if you are just neck deep into the, into the crap right now, divorce from stage one to stage four can be such an overwhelming thing. And a lot of times when men get out of it on the opposite side, they feel absolutely humiliated. They feel defeated. They feel like they are just smashed down and not worth a dime. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can actually go through a divorce and come out on the other side, being a completely different man, become through there and become better, become stronger, become nicer, kinder, all of that. And you can actually do that. Thanks to what I'm here to help you with. Now, today we're talking about fear. And this is one of the biggest things that comes through when you're going through on a divorce. And it is just one of those most crippling emotions out there. There's actually, if you were to boil all emotions down, boil them down to the basis of bases, you would see that there are actually two different types of emotions. There's love, there's fear. Actually, fear is the opposite of love. A lot of people want to say that hate is the opposite, but no, hate is actually an offshoot of fear. When you fear something and you don't understand it and you are afraid of it, you're going to actually hate it. You're going to hate that it could cause you problems. You're going to hate that it could take up your resources. You're going to hate a lot of things about it. And so there's all, there's two base emotions. There's love, there's hate, and we avoid fear in our, there's love and there's fear. And we, I, I think I said, hate. <laughs> um, but either way with the fear side of emotions, we, we avoid these emotions like the plague. And this is actually what causes us so many problems in our life because we are avoid these, this, these emotions because they seem so wrong. They seem bad. We call them negative emotions. And so you have a positive emotion, which is love. You have negative emotion, which is fear, but fear. So many people want to think is a terrible thing and we avoid it. And I understand why we used to avoid it because it used to keep us alive. And to a point, it still can actually keep us alive. Because fear is making sure that we don't step out in front of a bus, that we don't walk off the edge of a, of a building. We don't fall off a cliff. We don't pick up a rattlesnake. We don't, so that we do the things that make sure that we keep alive, stay alive is because we have a sense of fear. We are afraid of things. And beforehand, back in the, you know, way, way, way back when we were just, barely walking around and we were actually cave dudes and walking around with clubs, conking, uh, conking chicks on the head with, with them to, and dragging them off to, back to our cave. We were afraid of a lot of things. If there was something new that came over the, the horizon, holy smokes, the first time you ever saw a woolly mammoth scared the booger out of you. I'm sure. First time you ever came across a, is uh, saber tooth cat. You probably were new. Oh, that's a bad dude. You don't want to mess with him. Oh, he's looking at me like I'm a like I'm a meat burrito. I better be careful around him. We had things we needed to be afraid of because we are, in all reality, very weak and helpless. You have elephants. I mean, they've got some thick skin, so a, you know it takes more than just a single lion to take an elephant down. They're big. They're they've got thick skin. Hippopotamuses. 
nothing but a walking tank, you know. These a lot of these animals are don't show fear for a reason. And but yet they still also have instances of fear. I've seen times where lions have almost had a gazelle taken down or a water buffalo down and all of a sudden they got up and they ran for the hills because three uh, three other water buffalo decided never mind, we're going to come and save our friend. Fear keeps us alive. But at the same time, we don't need fear near as much as what we used to. And we, you can actually use fear. And if you can overcome fear, you can use fear as a secret weapon to overcome any obstacle that you're facing. Because all those obstacles are nothing more than fear-based emotions. Everything, I, 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 don't, I don't know, I can't, I, don't, I can't spend $100 on advertisement for my website because what if it doesn't work? Well, that's fear talking. Well, I don't have enough money. Well, you have enough money. You spent a hundred dollars to get, you know, you spent five hundred dollars just recently getting you the new PlayStation Five. Come on, man. You had a hundred dollars. You can have another hundred dollars. You're still gonna spend seventy bucks, which is seventy percent of a hundred dollar bill on a freaking game. So you can at least go off and hold on to that and spend that on, you know, advertisement for your for your business. Fear is one of those things that just will eat you up inside. But what is fear? Well, in all reality, fear is nothing more than an unmanaged mind. My uh, my mentor, Brooke Castillo, has has shown, shown us that time and time again, that our mind, when it's unmanaged, turns to fear every single time. Because if it's not, if the answer isn't right there, and if it hasn't experienced anything Similar to that in the past, your brain is going to say that's probably something you don't want to screw with. Because you got to remember, we have a motivational triad. If it, we're out to seek pleasure, avoid pain, and do things as easy as possible. that Avoid pain, that's where fear comes into play. You're not actually afraid of a bus hitting you. You're afraid of the pain you're going to be in if it doesn't kill you. You're actually afraid that you're going to die. We often want to say, no, 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 we're afraid that we're going to, it's going to kill us. No, we, if it kills us, we don't care. What do we care? We're dead. We're actually more of afraid of the pain that it may actually incur us if we do survive. Fear is an unmanaged mind. And the reason why it is, why I say that is because fear is us resisting a feeling. If you really look at it, fear is us just not wanting to feel an emotion. We're going to do everything we can to not feel something because we don't know what that something is going to be. You're not going to go ask the, you know, the good looking, uh, the good looking girl out on a date because she may tell you no. You're not going to tell your, ask your boss to do something to take a gamble on you because what if you lose? What if your, your idea doesn't carry through? You're not going to try a new business because what if it fails? Well, what if it does fail? What if a business does fail? What happens? Then you either A, go get a job, or B, you try another one. You try another business. You make an adjustment. Our fear builds out to being either anger, jealousy, resentment, bitterness, anxiety, all these negative feelings, all because of what we don't know. And we don't want to feel those. So to keep us from having to feel those, we're going to come up with well, we don't want to do this because I might be an might be viewed as an imposter. I'm not going to, to allow my emotions to rise up and give myself hope because what if I'm rejected for the for that new position? We avoid doing stuff because we're afraid of having an unpleasant feeling, an unpleasant emotion. But how if you can actually overcome that fear, if you can actually take that fear and apply it to your to yourself and use it as a springboard, and you can, and I'll let you know how you can do that, you actually have a super weapon that will propel you ahead of all your competition. And the key to all of this is because you have to remember what an emotion actually is. An emotion is nothing more than a vibration that we feel throughout our bodies. And with our life being 50-50, it's going to be 50% pain, which is a good vibration felt throughout our bodies. And it's going to be 50% pain that's going to be felt throughout our body. It's just a vibration. It may feel nice. It may not feel so nice. But that is just it. It's just a vibration. So why do we feel fear 
And why do we want to avoid so much? Well, like I just said, because it doesn't feel good or the possible, actually it's the possibility of an emotion not feeling good. Now, if you knew for an absolute sheer fact that, you know, if uh, you got something done and you had an orgasm, you know what you're going to do? You're going to go ahead and you're going to do it. If you knew spending a thousand dollars on a candy bar was going to give you an orgasm, you would spend, you, you'd be broke. If you knew that putting a thousand dollars was going to cause you to feel love, you would do it. You would be broke because you would spend all your money on that because you knew you were going to feel love. But because we may have to take that thousand dollars and put it into an advertising advertisement campaign that may not work, that may not work is the fear that overrides the good stuff. We want to feel pleasure, but we want to avoid pain. If there's a chance of pain, we're going to avoid that before we actually end up feeling pleasure. Now, I've talked about fear a lot. I've talked, uh, fear is one of those things that is just the biggest obstacle for not just us men, but all us humans. And if you can figure out where to use fear as a tool, like I said, you make it, you, you become a superhuman. You become incredible against adversity. When you see a barrier in front of you, guess what? You're going to go, Oh, <laughs> yeah, whatever, dude. We, we got this. We got this. this. This ain't nothing. All right, let's try this. You know what happens? What, what happens if you fail? Well, if we, you know what happens if we fail? We fail. We, we learn something. We take, take that, that failure. We apply what we learn from it to, and we try it again. Oh, we failed again. Oh, well, that's all right. That's all right. We're going to get up. We're going to do it again. And we're going to do it again. And we're going to change something every single time until we figure out what makes it work? But to be able to do that, you have to make sure that you avoid responding to fear as if it's something bad. Because you can actually take fear and make it a, a turn it into a, into a compass. And all of a sudden, when you start noticing the fear, that's where you realize that's where I need to go. That's where I need to be. And so you start going those directions and you start actually looking for the 400 pound gorilla in your life. That thing that you're afraid to talk about, you're going to actually head straight for it. Some say that fear is your mind and the past experiences telling you that you're in a place that's going to get you killed. No, it, it used to be back when we were cavemen, like I said before, but that's not the case now. Nowadays, our amygdala the only time it really is becomes the most powerful emotion is when we actually enter into the fight, flight, or freeze area. That's when we've hit our, our amygdala has slapped the panic button and has wrenched all controls from the human, from our, our cognitive brain and has gone into just blind panic. Fear is going to happen. We're going to be afraid of stuff. We're going to be afraid of the outcome. We're going to be, uh, we're going to be ske uh, scared. We're going to worry about stuff. These are all uh, items of fear and it's the opposite of love. Uh, love will build up. Love will allow you to carry through. While if you're afraid, you have a life full of fear, you're going to play it small. You're going to stay in that little cocoon, you're going to wonder why your wife left you and you're not going to get out there and you're not going to try anything new because, well, I don't want to be hurt again. You're afraid of getting hurt. If you're in a divorce or you've gone through a divorce and you're not out there trying to get back on that horse again, that horse has beat you. Life has beat you. You know what? You go through, you have a really messy, horrible divorce. That's when you need to pull your big, put your big boy britches back on and try riding that horse one more time. Because if you show that horse that you're afraid of it, it'll never respect you. And that is because it knows you're afraid. Life will know you're afraid. The people around you will sense that you're afraid. If you're afraid, you're not going to share the good ideas. Because what if? Somebody may steal my idea. You're afraid of what people will think, people will say, what people will do. These are all fears that we have, but to be able to get past that, you have to be able, okay with people doing things that you may not like people saying things that you may not like people doing things that you may not like people 
may look at you in ways that you don't like. But guess what? That's okay. It has no bearing on who you are. They could be afraid and they could look at you like that because they really wish they had the guts to do what you're doing right now. They could be very upset with the fact that they allowed life to kick them in the teeth several years ago while you took no heed to the warning and you just did what needed to be done. When we're afraid, we miss so many opportunities that are presenting themselves. They may actually be dressed up in nice clothes and actually say, hey, I am a once in a lifetime deal. I want you to do it. Take my hand and let's go. And you're going to go, wait a minute, something's wrong. Life doesn't do that to me. Life beats me up and tears me down and destroys me. And just like Jordan Peterson said in the 12 Rules for Life, the first rule he talks about is the whole that whole lobster chapter that everybody kind of gives a gives him a hard time about. But it was real in that book. He talks about how some lawyer lobsters are so much bigger. They hold themselves out. They fight ferociously. And then there are those who have lost and lost and lost. And they actually degrade and they become smaller and they shrink and because they have allowed themselves to get their butts kicked time and time again. And their brains have decided, you know what? You can't do this. Don't even try. And so they just kind of stay off to the side. All right. Does it mean that those lobsters that have got their butts kicked are nowhere near as good? No. But when you let life kick you in the teeth, when you let that divorce keep you down on the ground and you don't rise to the occasion, you're letting the divorce win. You're letting life keep you from finding the happiness you want. It's you're keeping, you're allowing the other guy to win all because you want to play it small. We play small because we're afraid of what might happen if we go big. What happens if you go big and go home? Well, you might just accidentally get it, which is going to be really cool. But, but, you know, there's that chance also it's not going to work out. And then you're going to crash spectacularly and everyone's going to look at you and they're going to make fun of you. And they're going to talk about you behind your back. And you're, the wife is going to leave you again and all this other stuff. You know, and we're going to come up with all these, all these stories, all these tales as to why things aren't going to work and why we can't try yet if we were to actually take the time to try and we were to actually take the time to step out and do our damnedest you might accidentally find that we have an ability that would blow our hair back we have this innate fear of a very thin veil being draped over our eyes and that veil is, well, it's not transparent. It's opaque. Let's, let's get better. It's an opaque veil. You can sort of see through it. You kind of see some shapes, but you really can't tell what it is. Is that a lamp or is that an executioner? You know, it's what, what, what is that? Is there something creeping underneath that chair or is that just a puppy dog? We don't know. And because we're not willing to go just push through that veil, we never see that on the other side is that executioner is actually a good looking babe wanting us wanting to have our kids. You know, it's not, we don't know that that is one of the best hound dogs you, we ever come across. And he's just as loyal as could be. And that the room on the other side of that veil is our house after we have created a very successful business. You can do that. Now passing through that veil isn't free of emotion. It is going to be rather unpleasant trying to push through that. It's almost like that veil, though it's opaque, has also got some, some, you know, some pokies in it. So as you're going through it, it's kind of roughing you up a little bit. It's not killing you. It's just, it's not comfortable. It's not something you want to do. It maybe even it's got a little, maybe it's got some, uh, some, some little bits of glass or I don't know. It's just something that you find very uncomfortable having to push through that veil isn't comfortable, but by George, that discomfort is the currency to what your dreams. You want your dreams to come true. You have to go through some discomfort to do it. You have to do the things that you're afraid of, because if you don't and you stay in fear, you're going to fall for anything. You're going to, someone who's willing to do the work, take the credit is going to do, 
is going to rob from you. That is one reason why, look at the Germans back in the 20s and through the 40s. They got their butts handed to them. The Kaiser failed them. They lost. They ended up getting humiliated. They ended up having to pay a whole bunch of, of retribution money back to uh, to the, the the countries that they invaded. They did all this all this stuff. They had to do all this and their morale got lower and lower and lower. And eventually they listened to someone who said, I've got the answer. I know why your life sucks. And it's not because of the, what the real reason as to why they, their life sucked. No, they decided to, the Bavarian people pointed to the Jewish population, the, or not Bavarian, Austrian people and Germans pointed to the Jewish population and said, it's these people. Look how rich they are. Look how they've got everything and you don't have anything. Why is that? Didn't want to listen to the fact that it's just a mindset. The Jewish people, they had the mindset to make money. They took it as their right to be able to make money. And the Jewish people were, or the, the German folks, they looked at it as going, well, we're not allowed to have money. We're supposed to be broke. And they took that and their fear that they were able to, of being able to play it big, turned around to where they listened to a madman. And they turned to that madman all because of fear. They were afraid that these Jewish folks somehow were making money and that they were being robbed. Instead of using their own brain, they actually just listened to a madman and was like, all right, yeah, he's making sense. Let's follow him. So how in the world do you overcome fear? If it is that basic of a an emotion, how do you overcome it? Well, first off, like I said, you've got to be able to recognize when you're in fear. How do you recognize fear? Best way is to do a thought download. Sit down at the end of the day and write down all your thoughts. Write those thoughts down. Just write them all down. Fill up a piece of paper if you want. When you get finished filling it, what were the emotions that you had associated with each of those thoughts? You're going to come across some where you find out, oh, wait a minute. I was actually afraid right there. It may not be the first day that you sit down and write it, write your thoughts down. It might be the 37th. It might be, you know, three months into it, It might be 90 days in. And you finally go, oh, wait a minute. That's a, wait a minute. That one's fear. And you start looking through the others and you go, oh, that was fearful. That was fear. I was hiding fear from myself because we are so afraid of fear that we will lie to ourselves about what's being, why we're being afraid. So when you start becoming absolutely honest with yourself and you start controlling the thinking part of your brain, you will start recognizing fear when you write down all your thoughts and you start looking at those, those feelings and you start examining those and you start asking yourself, well, did that, would that really have happened? You can look at those thoughts and go, well, okay, here's my wife didn't want to be around me anyhow. Well, is that really true? No, you just gave up because you were afraid to take the next step. And because you were afraid to take the next step, you sat in squalor until your wife gave up. And she's like, I need to find someone who's willing to take the step out to go to the next step. And she found that other person left you behind. And you've been sitting, sitting in that same pit wanting to know why you can't get out of it. And the reason you can't get out of it is because you're sitting on your butt and it's a five foot, you're in a five foot deep hole and you're just sitting on your butt. If you stand up, all of a sudden your elbows are above where you need to be and you can lift yourself out quite easily. If you're feeling fear at the moment, or if you come across a time and you realize you're hesitating doing something because you're feeling fear, that's when you can actually sit down and you can actually have a conversation with yourself if you want. Or you can actually just sit down and go, you know what? I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling afraid. I am afraid because I think this is going to happen. Is that really what's going to happen? No, I don't think that's really going to happen. I want, I know what the benefits are and you can actually start having conversations with yourself. You start working out and coaching through what actually is happening in your head. And that's one of the benefits of having a coach on hand. If you're sat down and you go, dude, I had, a, I, I, I'm feeling a, a fear whenever I look at starting a business. And the reason I keep throwing businesses out is because that's one of the scariest things people do because it is a big gamble. Because what happens if it fails? Well, you're out of several thousand dollars or you're out of 10, depending on how you start the business up. 
If you do some, some people can start a whole business off of 10 bucks, off of a hundred dollars. There's a hundred dollar startup by, uh, I think it's Chris Gillibo. Great book. You want to know how to do a hundred dollar startup? There's, you can start a business with a hundred dollars. You can start a business with less than that. If you, to be honest, all you need, you can start with just a bucket, a squeegee and a, and a, some soap and a sponge. And you would, you can start washing windows. That's maybe. 20, 30 bucks right there. And you can start washing windows. You don't even have to apply. You don't even have to go for the water. You can actually just use, you know, a customer's water. But all you have to do is take the steps and know when you're feeling the fear and allow that fear to run through you. And actually, dude, if you wanted to, you could actually sit down and really pay attention to what that fear is and recognize it. And as that fear is flowing through you, Describe it. Is it hot? Is it cold? Where's it setting? Is it on your shoulders? Is it pit of your stomach? Is it in your groin? Is it in the back of your head? Is it in your throat? You know, where do you feel the vibration? And when it, when you feel it and you narrow down where you feel it, keep describing it. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it spiky? Is it soft? Is it, is it fluttery? Is it pulsating? Is it, is it just, is it expanding? Is it shrinking? What's it doing? Is it, what type of textures? Is it scaly? Is it spikes? Or is it like having a bunch of razor blades? Or is it, you know, keep describing that. And as you keep describing it, you're going to notice that the, in, the sensation of it is getting lighter and lighter until eventually you're going to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm losing the sensation. I don't have all the descri- descriptions yet. I, where, oh, I lost it. And then you're going to realize that emotions only last about one to a, a minute to a minute and a half at most, roughly about 90 seconds. But, and I, I hear you. I hear you go, wait, 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 wait. When my wife left me, I know I felt like crap. I obsessed over it for four days straight. And now you're trying to tell me that it only lasts for a minute and a half. Yeah. The reason why it lasted that long is because you allowed your mind to ruminate and go over the whole situation again and 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 again. And when you're in that state, your chemistry changes. So does your chemistry change when you're staying in a prolonged state of of depression? Yeah. Your brain is always, the chemistry in your brain is always changing, man. Your chemistry changes from one minute to the next because you're feeling happy and then you're feeling depressed and then you're feeling horny and then you're feeling hungry and then you're feeling uncertain and you're always, you've got all these emotions that are always going on. And those emotions come from the thoughts that you have about the circumstance. Remember, circumstances are neutral. You have a neutral feeling, guess what? Or you have a neutral circumstance, the only reason why it's good or bad is because you have a thought about that circumstance. Your wife left you. Some people can look at that and go, dude, that was amazing. Yeah, she's out of here. And then there's others. Wife left. Oh my God, you can't console him for days. What was the, what's the difference? The person's thought about the circumstance. If a, an event created the emotions, we would all feel the same emotion when that event happened. And... One of the best examples is 9-11. A lot of us were very upset, very mad, very, you know, uncertain. We were fearful when 9-11 happened. Now, if that was true that everybody, that 9-11 made everybody very fearful, then the people in the Middle East wouldn't have been celebrating. They would have been just as fearful of going, oh my gosh, somebody attacked the United States. This is not a good thing. But yet there were people having parties on the roofs of their of their houses in the Middle East because the US had been attacked and it's all because they had a thought that was different than what ours was so how do you overcome fear pay attention to what you're feeling when you recognize that you're starting to feel fear look at what it is you're thinking about that and see why you're feeling fear over it and that's how you can use your fear as a compass to, as to where you need to go, because the, you're going to avoid the place you need to go the most. If you go and you achieve that goal, everything else is going to be cake. So I'd like to hear if you have something that you found, came across that was just scary and you were f- afraid, write it down and send it to me. Send me an email, brian at relaxedmail.com. And that's brian with a Y at relaxedmail.com. 
and let me know what it was. And I'd love to have a conversation with you. Not, it's not going to cost anything. I just want to have a conversation with you. Talk to you about it. See, and see what your, uh, what your thoughts were. If you are going through a divorce right now, if you are having a problem, you are facing some major fear. I'm going to let you know, dude, reach out to me. Go to relaxmail.com forward slash coaching. Set up a time for a, for a consult call. Well, what we'll do is we'll sit down and we'll see how well would you, you and I fitting together. How well do we fit? How well do we, are we going to be able to work with each other and let you see what type of transformational world you could be living in once you actually have a divorce coach? I can be your coach. I can help you get through this, through this rough time in your life and make it to where by the time your divorce is over, you are a guy who can face the world and not be afraid of it. If you want help with that, reach out, relaxmail.com forward slash coaching. Now, if anything I said in here helped you, resonated with you, got you to think about it for a moment, I would like to, my big ask is you share this out, share this with the men and other men in your life. If the you got a man who's going through a divorce that, you know, share this with them, shoot them all our podcast apps, uh, apps these days have a share button hit that share button send it as a text to that guy going dude i'm thinking of you this i think this is going to help and send it to them let them let them listen they may agree they may not who cares but if they do and they listen and they get something from it you help them out tremendously share this also if you like this episode if you like something that was said in it and you think that it would help a random person that you may not even realize needs to hear this Share it onto your Facebook. Share it onto Twitter. Take a screenshot of it. Share it over onto uh, onto Instagram. Share it wherever you listen. You have a, a good following, and let them know that there is a group of men out there called the Relaxed Men, Relaxed Male, and we are here to help you become better men. We're helping men who are going through a divorce get through the uh, get through a divorce, come out the other side stronger becoming a, a pure man. And the way we do that is with your help. So guys, I want to thank you very much for listening. Y'all take care. We're going to see you next week and we're going to be talking about something else that's uh, important to you men. What that is right now, don't know. <laughs> we'll have to figure it out. So anyhow, guys, thank you again for listening. We'll see y'all next week. And so until then, 